Ladies and gentlemen, I have been known as a very old-fashioned guy. I have a microphone with me from the 1960s. You know, I dress in a way that's not pleasing today, but, you know, I think it looks nice. But my first point to tell you is sex. This all relates back to sex. Does it everything? How babies are made. Obviously, we need to cover this in this uh, argument. Uh, the biblical usage for sex was between one man and one woman within marriage. I have very traditional values, so that's why I believe. Uh, you hear the joke, well, show me Adam and Eve's marriage certificate. Well, here I have a definition of marriage. Marriage is the joining of two people before God and all of creation. Well, all that was around was God and all of creation at the time. So there wasn't a, necessarily a ceremony. Uh, then we have this point, childbirth is more painful because Adam and Eve sinned against God. That is, to sh uh, that is written in Genesis. And then we have uh, the miracle of childbirth cannot be achieved by everyone. Because adoption is the way we solve uh, abortion. So we need less abortion, more adoption. We need to protect life because it's very important. And someone could be aborted and they could have sa saved the world. They could have had the ticket to world peace in their mind. And now that's lost because they were not born. People want children. Uh, who here wants children? Everyone? Just a couple people? Mr. Avery, you want children, don't you? Sure. <laughs> not everyone can do that. My great-grandparents could not do that. Um... Uh, this is a statistic, uh, and the source is at the end. 50% uh, of women who are infertile consider adoption. Think of all the people that could have been adopted that were aborted instead. This is my Grandpa Ray, um, and all of these photos, except for this one, and this was when he worked at the corrections office. He was a sergeant for Kent County Corrections for 21 years, protecting our community and us. And he's, he, he and my grandma really raised me, and they made me the person I am today. Uh, there's all different photos of us together, or photos of him, because he was adopted by my great-grandparents. And, you know, who knows where we would have been, our family, if it was not for my great-grandparents and him being adopted. Uh, there is a very graphic, uh, animated... Uh, cartoon-like thing coming up, and you might want to look away if you do not like images. This is a second trimester abortion. Uh, here we see the, where the fetus or the baby is, and uh, it gets ripped apart. They take tongs, and they crush the bones, as seen there. They take it all out, and then they crush the head into either two or three pieces, and they take it out. And then they have to reassemble it to make sure there was nothing left behind at the end. The cruelty of this is not well shown because by this time, the baby can already feel pain. Now, Ronald Reagan, my favorite president, said, I've noticed that everyone that is against abortion has already been born. Uh, the, the comedic genius of President Reagan is unmatched by anyone I've ever met. Uh, some people, uh, like myself, uh, believe in a greater power, God, and believe in the Bible. And there are 12 verses, I have them on two pages, that uh, uh, speak against abortion. Um, specifically, Jeremiah 1, five. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. That's to show, this verse here is to show that uh, a person has a plan for their life and Maybe that is gain aborted because Jeremiah 29, 11, 21, 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you to grow and prosper you. Well, you know, he knows what's going to happen to us. We don't. But this, a prophet to the nations means uh, someone that brings peace or that spreads God's word. The Constitution uh, does not say anything about life specifically. Uh, it references um, the death penalty once, and that's the only crime mentioned is treason. But here we see in the Declaration of Indep Independence that all men 
are created equal and they are endowed by their creator creator with certain unalienable rights life liberty and the pursuit of happiness how can you pursue happiness if you were not born and also in our 14th amendment here's uh the first section and then in red is what uh, red and yellow i have highlighted the specific um uh nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process. Per day, there are 125,000 abortions worldwide, estimated by Worldometers. Can you click that? So in this year alone, it's estimated that there are 39,961,000 over that number, and it keeps rising every second. There are various health risks for the mother. Um, I have that laid out in 0.5 font on five slides. Oh, sorry, maybe it's four slides. No, five slides. Uh, those are all the risks to the mother, uh, some including death and emotional problems afterwards, guilt, and other things. The satisfaction to the problem. You must vote for politicians that are pro-life. Fill out the right to life petition and send letters to your congressman. Send letters to President Trump also encouraging him to pass pro-life laws. I want you to close your eyes, everyone, please. Close your eyes and visualize with me, if you will, the better world. No more cancer, world peace. For some of you, better video games, industry leaders, and better technology to more efficiently farm. There will no, be no more food shortages because there will be a solution to that given by, one of the, uh, by a person eventually. Some people offered advice as to the last couple. Uh, think of all the people that could be named Joe. Credit must be given where credit is due. David Van Buren. Here is my bibliography to point out all of my sources throughout the uh, uh, presentation and why uh, abortion should end. Thank you.